The number one thing that you came up with on your stickies is that electricity is power or a source said, of energy. I said voltage of power. Voltage of power. So we have some basic knowledge of it. Oh, did we get it correct? Uh, yeah. I think okay. I came up with the human <laughs> On your sheet, on your sheet, you need to do a little bit of fill the lights. Okay, so stay with me here. So, the first people to really discuss electricity were the Greeks. You know, those guys that walked around the, yeah, the, the total party guys, right? Okay? That's where they lived, in places like that. They knew about static electricity and the existence of two types of charges. Is that on there? No, you have to write it in. The Greeks knew about, the, uh, knew about static electricity and the existence of two types of charges. What are those two types of charges called? Positive or negative? Do you know who? Do you know who the first person was that came up with those words? Positive or negative? Uh, I was gonna guess your name started with like a phone or something. If someone that I've already mentioned today. Uh, Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. Yes, he was the guy. So the Greeks didn't know about that. Fast, fast forward a little bit to the 1700s. Gentlemen. <laughs> Flash forward a bit to the 1700s. Uh, ideas were emerging that some objects were electric, attracted to other objects when rubbed, and others were non electric. So some things would hold creating a static electricity charge, and other things wouldn't. If they had known about grocery bags back then, do these things hold static electricity? Yep. Yeah. They do, they stick together, right? They're hard to pull apart, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like when you've got multiple ones together, right? Like when they come flat? Oh, right? Socks under your dryer have static electricity, right? Your hair, for those of you that are like your pass out. What things don't hold electricity? Great. What kind of things don't hold electricity? Insulation. Carpet? Like, really? Yeah, I think you can use uh, you uh, shock on carpet. Right? On the what? What's what? probably a good one, yeah. How about okay. Good. Rocks. Yep. Yeah. Okay. This guy here with the 80s hair. His name is Charles Dufay. Cool. Do you have a picture of him? No. Draw him. What? Not him. Um, Don't draw him. That's Charles Dufay. No, it's not art class. He discovered. Read. He discovered that a cork ball touched by an electrified glass rod. And a different cork ball touched by an electrified resin rod would attract each other. So he took a glass rod like this, rubbed it with like rabbit fur or something or other, and then tossed it to this cork ball. And then he rubbed resin, which is like a old kind of style like plastic, kind of like a black kind of plastic. You know, like that. You know, the handles off really old uh, frying pans, that kind of stuff. Okay. So he rubbed that with rabbit fur, touched it, and they would actually attract each other. Why? Is that exactly. One would become positive and the other would become negative, and we know that positive and negative is a track. Right? We know that now. Charles Dufay did not know that. Is that is that resin? Is that like an old, like on an old like tractor? Would that be the steering wheel on it? Uh, it could be that old kind of plastic. Yep. That bake light kind of stuff. It's black. Yeah, oh, kind of. Okay. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it kind of de degenerates and comes apart. No, no, Absolutely. Not that's actually a it's here. It, some might be rubber. Yeah. With some fur on the inside, just so it doesn't get uh, cold in the winter. Definitely. Uh, like crap. Fur on the inside? Yep. Yeah. Really? Uh, no, it's just, it could be fiberglass. He just lied. Yeah. Okay, so back to Charles Defay. You have to write in at the bottom there. At the bottom there, guys. See? Right here? Right here. 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 Okay. So, Defay believed that there were two kinds of, he called them fluids. You know, like liquids kind of thing. And he called them vitreous electricity. Because vitreous is the Latin word for glass, and the other one was called resinous electricity, which is that black plastic kind of stuff. So vitreous and resinous, those are two words that you should have sort of some idea about. Let's put a little start side. Does it say grade 10 on it? Oh, I apologize. My mistake. My mistake. Ray, what's going on? I don't know. No, I need you to sit. I need you to sit. No, I don't need it. Just hang out. So we're not actually oh, yeah, here. No, no, I don't need it. I don't want it. 
It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. I need you guys to be listening to this, okay? Because there will be a little quiz on this. You're going to need to know this stuff. Don't say to me, I didn't get this because you weren't listening. Okay. You face that all objects contain both fluids. So everything has resonance and everything has vitreous uh, fluids in it. This is key right here. Neutral contained equal amounts of both. Is that kind of true with what we know today about positive and negative? Three. Yes, because if you've got the same amount of positive and the same amount of negative, which you would have learned in Mr. Love class, you would get neutral, right? Power of protons and electrons, right? He also said that vitreous objects contain more vitreous fluid and resinous objects contain more resinous. Sort of makes sense. Sort of makes sense. We're on the next page, Chris. So everything contains fluids. If you got the same amount, they're they're neutral. If you've got more of one than the other, you got vitreous or resinous. He said, and being the guy that makes up the test, I'm gonna still start put a star beside that. He said that when a vitreous object comes in contact with a resinous one. The fluids travel from one another to balance out. Does that sort of fit with our idea about positive and negative here in 2015? Sort of, kind of, right? Was he on the right track, you think, Mason? Yeah. No. More or less, he just didn't sort of have that all figured out, right? More or less. So he said that when a vitreous object like this one here comes in contact with a uh, resinous one here, the fluids sort of go and they balance each other out, and then that's how it works, kind of, right? All good? Awesome. There are three problems with this thought. Number one, what happens when two vitreous objects touch? They can't balance out. They can't balance out, right? In fact, and nowadays, we know that they would repel. His model wouldn't explain that. His scientific model couldn't explain that. It also couldn't explain what happens when two resinous objects touch. That they would also repel in today's age, right? He couldn't explain that. Kind of like magnets, yeah. He also said he couldn't really come up with why things attract and repel. He just said that when they touch, there's this transfer, right? But when you rub that balloon on your head and stick it to the wall, why does it stick to the wall? He couldn't explain that. How come there's the attraction? The fluid can't transfer until there's contact. Okay? Everything should attract everything else. He couldn't explain it. So his model was sort of basic, but it didn't explain everything. Does that make sense? Do you know any other scientific models that sort of started off and then were changed over time? Bohr's model diagram. Bohr's model, that's right. That's good. Think about like solar system. Uh, yeah, exactly. They used to think what? Earth was at the center, and now we know it's the sun, right? So there's another example. Good. Here's Ben Franklin. You have a picture of Ben Franklin. I didn't put a picture of uh, his face. Now, you know what? Ben Franklin was an amazing guy. He did a lot of things, right? He did a lot of things. So Franklin said, he said, Dufay's model, you're wrong. Couldn't explain things. He said, Dufay, you're wrong. Okay? You're wrong. He proposed a one fluid model. He was the guy that said there's only one kind of fluid. He also was the guy that came up with the terms positive and negative. Now, unfortunately, there is a lot of controversy over the words positive and negative. <laughs> Does anyone know what conventional current means? Did you guys, anyone here take uh, electronics the first part of the year? We're not really. I did, but uh, you didn't do anything. Did, no? No. Well, it sounded like you did something there, right? The difference between conventional current and electron flow. Conventional current goes from positive to negative. Originally, Franklin thought it was the positives that move, right? When you guys did chemistry with Mr. Love, what's on the outside of the, the uh, atom? The electron, and they jump from 
one to the other, right? The electrons are free to go, the protons are kind of like prisoners, they're stuck in the middle, right? Right. Yeah. So, it was Frank in the thought that the positives were moving, and he named them positive, but it turns out he's actually kind of backwards. Really? Oh, it looks like a lot of both of them. Yeah. All fired up today, Chris? I can almost challenge you. I know. Gray, leave him alone. Okay. So, lots of controversy here. <laughs> That's all right. Controversy. Lots of controversy, right, Reed? You don't have to agree with that. All you need to know is that there's some kind of, you know, problem with that. Okay. Franklin said, neutral had just the right amount of fluid. Now, I thought I had a picture on here. Didn't I not? Do you guys have a picture there? Yeah. You guys have the picture, right? Okay, good. So, I call it the Goldilocks model. You guys know the story about Goldilocks? Yeah. You know, the, the oatmeal was too hot, too cold, just right. The bed was too soft, too hard, just right. Same idea. Okay. So, positive is too much fluid. What's your picture look like down there? Negative, positive, neutral. Negative, positive, neutral? Okay. So, let me just draw that. Negative, positive, Neutral. So with your picture, read, read, stop boxing class. With your picture, negative is first, is that right? Yeah. Okay, so not enough fluid. So I want you to draw a line there and just sort of show this fluid. Not enough. Glass half empty kind of thing. Okay, it's, it's neutral. Not enough fluid. Positive would be too full. It's actually spilling out over the top. Too much. Too much. It's spilling out. It's trying to get out of there. Neutral would be? Halfway. No, right to the top. Perfect. Perfect amount. Now, Grady, that's a great point because on the midterm, this is what I saw. This is what I saw students write. They put neutral here, they put positive there, and they put negative down here. Is that right? No, that is wrong. In fact, if you want to draw that wrong one, with a big X through it, that would help me. Okay? The correct one is this one here. Negative is not to the top. Positive is overflowing. Neutral is just to the top. When did Cookie Monster drain across? Oh. Oh, shut up, Gary. I'll pass your sled any day. Okay. So, does this solve? some of the problems with the phase model. Let's go back to those three problems. Yes. What happens when two vitreous objects touch? If you've got two vitreous, two positives, they repel. Does it solve that? If they're positive, they're overflowing, does it sort of explain why they repel? Well, maybe. Both these things are overflowing and they're kind of pushing each other away, right? It's a bit of a step in the right direction. What happens when two resinous objects touch? There's not enough. Why would they repel? I guess doesn't really do a good oh, doesn't really do a good job explaining that one, does it? Why do objects attract and repel? If you've got neutral and positive Brandon, it kind of explains that, right? One's got just the right amount. One's got positive, it's trying to get into that extra space there, right? So it sort of is an improvement, sort of an improvement on the DC model, a little bit. Okay? Jaden, go. Go. We're going to do that. Okay.